Welcome back to Le Web for the second day of Le Web here in Paris. And I welcome Brian Schull with us today to talk about his experience. He's a former US Air Force uh, pilot and now he's a famous photographer, author, and speaker. So, welcome. Thank you. <laughs> um, so, tell us this is a, a conference about web about technology, so tell us what you're doing here. No due respect, but we could wonder. Well, I've asked myself that same question, uh, but I uh, bring a little something different to the table. Uh, I am going to talk to everyone today about uh, topics that affect everyone, about making choices, uh, regardless of what business you're in or what type of technology you deal with. Uh, I have a story. Uh, that relates to any man or woman uh, based on uh, real life uh, and I hope it has uh, some meaning for the audience today. Could you tell us about your career because you had quite an incredible path uh, throughout your life. You started as a pilot, had to fight during the Vietnam War, had to go through quite an ordeal after an accident and then became the pilot of the Blackbird, quite a famous very fast jet. Um, so, could you tell the audience exactly how was your life? Well, I was uh, unfortunately shot down flying in Vietnam and then uh, I spent a year in the hospital and they said uh, I would be lucky just to live and then uh, of course I'd never fly again. Um, I was able to go back to flying which was amazing in itself, had some very good doctors. But I uh, then went on uh, and flew for a number of years and then flew the top secret uh, world's fastest jet, the Blackbird. And uh, more amazingly, I was able to take some photographs of the airplane in the years I was around it. They've now become a very rare collection. So when I got out of the Air Force, I've written a book about what that was like to fly the plane. Um, and so it was kind of a big story in the Air Force that a uh, man comes from near death in the uh, hospital to flying world's fastest jet. Um, and a lot went on in that story that I try to take the key points from and have formed a talk that uh, I find is, uh, it resonates with people all over the world, um, whether they, have, they don't have to fly airplanes to understand overcoming hurdles in, in life. Uh, so it's a universal story and I uh, make it interesting by showing some of my slides of the airplane uh, to tell my story. Going back to that photography skills you have, you of course took pictures of the plane but you also take a lot of pictures of nature I've seen. Tell us more about that. Well, I, I was a very uh, avid aviation photographer because I was in love with airplanes and it was a natural uh, desire to want to photograph things in the air. But uh, on my spare time all those years I was uh, out hiking in, in the mountains and doing nature photography and that became a real passion as my flying days ended. Uh, I then could concentrate, spend more time on my nature photography and now I'm putting together a gallery of uh, all my nature and aviation photography together and I have found as a as a pilot that I have a real affection for birds and I photograph a lot of uh, a lot of birds now and it's it's fun uh, but it's something I always did and now can devote a little more time to. One last question before we hand out um, the microphone in a way to Corentin who's here with us in uh, from Paris. Um, as Le Web is a uh, both a um, conference about technology and also entrepreneurs. Uh, I have um, one first question on the technology part. How would you say technology fits both in your career, because the Blackbird must have been some technology um, something, <laughs> and in photography as well? Does it count a lot? Do you look at new technologies in pictures? Absolutely. Uh, first of all, the jet that I'll talk about in my talk was the most amazing technological achievement in the 1960s aviation wise so it's a phenomenon in that respect uh, as we got into the internet era and digital era of course our photography all changed and we we do our own publishing and also we we became digital publishers and we are now developing light box prints and things in our gallery that are very high tech and very uh, beautiful for people to look at and very popular so um, 
everything that's high tech out there from from the cell phone I'm wearing on my belt to uh, our computers and uh, how we show our work and how we display it of course is uh, a great part and, and we are my company is a great example of the entrepreneurial uh, spirit in that we just did it all on our own and said I think we can do this when everyone said we couldn't um, it wasn't easy but uh, well there's a will there's a way so uh, I feel if uh, this at conference is about technology and the entrepreneurial spirit we we definitely have a story to tell <laughs> nice um, so now Corentin I think you have questions for Brian well that's your turn yeah yeah hello Brian uh, nice to meet you uh, so I'm uh, I'm in Paris at the co-working space, uh, and uh, so you basically you you are going to go on the web stage uh, very soon. So I look forward to watch your your presentation. Uh, without making the old pitch and old presentation, I would be very curious of a few key points. What what is the main key points you want to the audience uh, to 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 get from your speech? The key points uh, I would like them to get today are to appreciate how precious each day is, the opportunity that it presents, and to live fearlessly in pursuing their passion and their dream. Too often people allow fear to stop them, and uh, if you look at all the great technological advances, for example, and the people who have made the most contribution, they're usually people who enjoy what they do, believe in it, have a passion for it, and went forward with it when others said no and it can't be done. Uh, and my story is a is a good example of that, and I I hope that people take a very positive energy uh, from them uh, from me uh, when they leave my talk today. Corentin, do you have another question, or shall I go on? Because you said you wanted to remember some few key points. Um, yeah, exactly. Can can you? Um, you said you have. Um, it's a very interesting thing as an entrepreneur as well. Like you have to be persistent and you have to go through obstacles in order to to achieve things sometimes. And so um, uh, sometimes it's actually better to review your your the, the way you do things and reconsider in order to maybe to, to, to do things differently. So how far do you push things? Uh, how far do you do you, do you do you, do you think you need to, to go through things to make things happen? I think that uh, every situation is different and, and if people think they have limitations then that's their limitation. If people think they can they can do it, usually they can. I don't think there's any one formula for success certainly and there's, there's a time zone. You have to be willing to fail. People that are afraid to fail and afraid to try, I mean, they want everything to be successful, usually aren't the innovators. It's the people that are not afraid uh, to go forward, and they know they're going to fail a number of times. And Everyone always mentions Thomas Edison and the light bulb, but 247 failures before that light came on. <laughs> but he, that's what you remember is that it, it did come on. Uh, so it, it, people have to, you have to view each case individually in that, in that perspective. I have a question um, about fear. There, I mean, when we look through your story, there are many occasions where we could think it would be scary. So how did you overcome that fear and what had been your uh, biggest fear throughout your life? Well, actually, I have fear often and there's many times there was a lot of fear. Um, my theory is that usually it's fear that stops us and most of the time we generate artificial fears in our life. Um, there are of course real fears and danger and you know car accidents or flying the jet too close to each other but uh, but I think we generate a lot of self fears that uh, don't come to pass and that's the kind that I really think we need to overcome. Um, uh, it, it's I've been scared many times and, and had fear, but uh, it's when you have you have fear of moving forward in your life that it really it really is is shackles you uh, more than than just a scary moment in life that you can overcome. So fear is really the key point. You would say, I mean, today you are going to speak to a lot of entrepreneurs, I guess. So, I mean, if there was one thing you wanted them to remember after your speech, what would it be? Overcome your fear, or well, well, that would be certainly one of them. I, I really believe strongly that um, 
each day is a gift and we tend to think sometimes we have many many days left and I would uh, venture to say there's not one person in the audience today that can tell you how many days they have so fearlessly use each day like it is a treasure because you just don't know how many you have and I think that the fact that if I want them to leave with one concept it would be that life is short and it's uncertain and because it's both of those things uh, we can't miss the opportunities of each day there was something else that struck me in um, in uh, your biography is that I mean through all the things that you've lived we could have thought that you could lose your faith in humanity I mean you've seen horrors I guess so how did you succeed in turning around all those horrible things you might have seen into a some kind of faith in in the future and in in, in the power of everyone to overcome uh, the horror horror that surrounds us sometimes that's a good question and I'm not going to say I didn't reach a rock bottom of depression and and uh, wanting to give up at times but I think it comes down to you make a choice you you come down to you either are going to live the rest of your life in a negative mode and 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 not amount to anything and complain and feel sorry for yourself or hate all things or you're going to take a positive approach and make the most of it and really it's it's only those two choices you come to a dead end it's not a lot in between you're either going to be positive or negative and once you realized those were the only two choices it was an easy choice to make now it didn't mean that living that way would be easy it, it wasn't always easy to do but to make that choice um, the alternative was uh, was basically a slow death um, and I, I realized that I had to let go of certain feelings I had about the way I looked or uh, my life or what I thought my life was going to be or not be and let go of those things and then a lot of good things started happening and that's why I, a lot of the things I'll talk about in my in my talk today. Corota, did you have one more question or? Yeah, sure. Uh, yeah, sure. <clears throat> so we talked about fears and uh, um, I'd like to as well in the same uh, area uh, talk about doubts. Did, did you have any doubts at some point, when, especially when you, when you went through your recovery? Uh, did you have doubts that you could actually make it? Absolutely. I had a lot of doubts. In fact, uh, like I said, I, I reached rock bottom in, in depression and all. But once I turned the corner and realized that that was my choice, that I, could, I would at least try, uh, there was no guarantee that I would make it. There was no guarantee I'd succeed and all. But that wasn't the point. It was that you were making a choice to move in a different direction and all you can ask for in life really is the opportunity I had an opportunity there was no guarantee it would work I'd ever fly again or do any of the things that I talk about in my my speech but uh, that yes I, it was very I had a lot of doubts but then you had to shove those aside and, and say well let's just see what's what's possible because if you don't try then you know what's possible and nothing so uh, I'd rather not know and, and try than, than to just give up totally. Once I came to that realization, it became a, a somewhat of a challenge and a goal and gave me a reason to do my physical therapy every day. And uh, it's just an attitude, it's a direction, and it's, it's a uh, choice that we make in life. I would like to come back to one point that you mentioned uh, earlier, which is that technology allowed you to self-publish, self um, also show your pictures to the world. How that opportunity actually uh, changed things in, uh, in the path of your career? Well, the greatest change was when the internet got big in the 90s and then everyone uh, saw my book, then they saw excerpts and they saw pictures and articles and it was such an instant uh, worldwide connection that uh, I became uh, <laughs> better known than I ever wanted to be, uh, but in a good way. Um, but it was like an explosion of uh, uh, notoriety and, and uh, sharing of information. And then uh, things go all over the world, and people would put up excerpts or pictures from my book, and all of a sudden we'd we'd be get a lot of orders and emails and things. So it, it definitely affected the world and affected all of us that. Uh, the uh, rapid uh, transmission of information to every corner of the globe um, instantly uh, was was a great change in uh, a way we marketed the way we uh, advertised our, our, our product and uh, 
it, it uh, kind of put us on the map, so to speak. Um, um, but uh, I, I, just, I can remember days pre-internet when we were, and uh, it's the world's just very different now. And uh, so we we've, we've benefited from it, and, and sometimes it, it hurts you too. You know, it, it's a it's a two two-edged sword, I think. But uh, it's been mostly good. I mean, the internet was created through the U.S. Army. Did you yes. see it before we did? Well, we had people in the office you know, using it uh, for messages and everything, and it, we never thought it was going to be what it is today. Uh, today, we're just all connected, and uh, that's that's a little scary sometimes, but uh, but I think it's made the world, uh, there's great opportunity, too, uh, and it's it's great. I mean, we, we'd be lost now without email every day. <laughs> Um, maybe before we finish, let's uh, see whether Kurt has the last question. Yeah, um, uh, about power and the strength. Well, where do you find the resource? Uh, do you find it in, in yourself or do you, um, is the help of other people uh, something that you, that you need or where do you find your, your strength? I think we're a, we're a product of everything we've done up to that point and everyone we've ever known and everyone that's ever affected us. So. I'm a product of all those things, uh, whether it's my parents, my teachers, my coaches, my friends, and my own attitude about life and what I wanted to do. Um, everyone's different. I'm not saying that everybody can just, you know, uh, I'm going to teach someone how to live a certain way or think a certain way. Um, but there are some universal concepts that uh, I believe do relate to everyone. Uh, I found that the real strength you possess is in you, inside you, Kesta deep down inside. I had my the muscles of my body completely were worthless. I was uh, near death in the hospital so I had relied on my physical strength all my life and it was new to me not to to have that so I, I was ready to give up and then I realized uh, I learned in my, my process that um, the real strength you have is your will, your attitude and, and an inner strength that has little to do with the with the musculature of your body so uh, it was a it was a learning process, and and uh, it was something. Now, when I look back on it, I I realize I was just as weak and just as uh, afraid as anyone else would be in that situation. But but amazingly, was able to survive it to where now I've learned these lessons, and I want to share them. Well, thank you, Brian Chul. Thank you, Corentin. So, Brian, you'll be speaking today at five thirty. If anyone out there want to see your conference. It was a pleasure meeting you. Quite an honor, I think, also as well. And have a nice day in Paris and then the web. Yeah, thank you very much. And we'll meet you all uh, for the next Hangout with um, Bill Tai at 3 o'clock this afternoon. Thank you. Couldn't hear that.